Chapter 30, The Affluent Society The Economic Miracle The economy grows rather than dec declines. There is a gross national product increase as well as low unemployment and inflation. The causes include the government and military spending, the baby boom increasing consumer demand, and the expansion of suburbs and thus other industries. The economy outpaces the population. There is more income and purchasing power. It's the America experiences the highest standard of living anywhere so far in history. Favorable, the favorable climate helps grow cities in the West, promoting economic growth with in infrastructure, cars, suburbs, and highways. Then we have what's called Keynesian e economics in which we vary government spending and taxing fiscal policy and managing the currency supply monetary policy. Therefore the government is able to stimulate the economy, economy to cure recession and dampen growth to prevent inflation. The Keynesian recovery in 1953 versus the non-Keynesian recovery in 1957 shows the value of the Keynesian economics. So there's a belief in permanent economic growth, so people think that we can end poverty through increasing abundance rather than redistribution. Many corporate mergers give concessions to labor unions, such as increase in wages and the mechanization of farms. The post-war contract allows workers to get higher wages and benefits while unions don't raise other issues. The American Federation of Labor and the Congress of Industrial Organization merge and form the AFL-CIO. It survived, but with conflict. There are limited gains for un unorganized workers, anti and anti-union sentiment is particularly rampant in the South. The explosion of science and technology. There's an increase in antibacterial drugs to fight infection, such as penicillin and the smallpox vaccine, which leads to more immunization. Va vaccines against viruses are more difficult but achievable, such as the Salk va vaccine against polio. Pesticides, such as DDT, were toxic to insects but not were thought to be toxic to insects, but not to other other living beings. It helps against um, malaria and typhus. However, it la later, there's a later discovery that the, the toxic effects have there are toxic effects on both animals and humans, which is not good at all. With electronic technology, we have in television transistors and transistors, transistors help miniaturize devices and in integrated circuits. In the 1950s, there's the computer called the Universal Auto Automatic Computer, which became popular because, because of its prediction of the 1952 election. The International Business Machines Company creates data proce processing computers for businesses. The hydrogen bomb by the U.S. and then later the Soviet Union leads to the development of missiles, intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs. The hydrogen bomb was much more powerful than previous bombs because of its use of fusion rather than fission. The Soviet Union Sputnik is the first satellite to go into space, and it sh shocks the United States. So we start more science education and speed the development of our outer space measures. So we form the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, better known as NASA, which comes up with astronaut programs. The U.S. efforts such as the Mercury and Gemini pro projects, what we do happens after the Soviet Union does it, basically. The Apollo program had a goal to put men on the moon. 
and they were successful. However, they had less funding after 1972. In, and in the 80s, we had the space shuttle. People of Plenty. There is an expansion of the middle class lifestyle. Eve, including minority social groups and the availability of consumer products becomes wider. The, because of prosperity, there is consumer-driven growth of consumer credit. And we have consumer crazes like the, the hula hoop and the Mickey Mouse Club as well as the development of Disneyland. The influence of the automobile pervades the landscape. There are interstate highways everywhere and houses located away from work because we can travel in cars to where we need to go. There are backyards, garages, motels, drive-ins, fast food chains, supermarket chains, and, all, and a huge demand for oil because of the development of the automobile. William Levitt develops a system of mass, mass production of houses to, in order to meet the demand for housing, and this leads to suburbanization. The, the appeal of the suburb included family time after the war, easier to have socialist circles, and a place for whites away from blacks and other minorities. Gender roles remain the same, men work and the women at home, however, there is actually an increase in women working to help accommodate this higher standard of living. There is an exponential expansion of television. It's the main source of information and entertainment in the 1950s. The images presented on television are primarily white, middle class, and suburban, alienating other groups. And TV news shows social social and which makes them more likely to happen. There's a sharp increase in vacation travel, especially to national parks. In Echo Park, the government wants to build a dam. However, the American Environment Movement reawakens, and the Sierra Club and many others stand against what the government wanted, and they win in this conflict. Now, the key to, to success is perceived as specialized training and skills to work in large companies. So there's a growth of specialized education, especially in science and, science and math, and foreign language. With bureaucratic life, not so good. William White uh, publishes The Organization Man, saying that self-reliance is losing to cooperation and teamwork. David Reisman writes The Lonely Crowd. There's a transition from self-values and family esteem to winning approval from others. Critics, The critics of bureaucracy and middle-class society, society were known as beats, or beatniks. They were mostly the youth. They had critiques of conformity. The meaningless, uh, meaninglessness of po politics and the banality of popular culture. The youth were restless and more delinquent. Um, and other examples of the beatniks include Allen Ginsberg's poem ha Howl and the Jack Kerouac's Bible of the Beat Generation. Rock and roll is especially exemplified in Elvis Presley which had influences in black rhythm and the blues, as well as others. On the radio, we start to have more recorded music. It helps spread the popularity of rock, records, jukeboxes, and defining themselves through music. The Other America. Michael Harrington wrote a book called The Other America. It brought attention to poverty in America. Poverty was especially bad for many elderly, African-American, Hispanic, Native American. The growing prosperity didn't eliminate poverty as they had once thought. There are declining agricultural prices due to a surplus, declining the importance of cotton and many impoverished people. Whites moved to the suburbs and blacks and Hispanics as well as other minorities moved to the cities where there is a so-called culture of poverty. 
The jobs they were looking for were in decline. Economic opportunities were unavailable. And with urban renewal, they were tearing down the poorest and degraded buildings and replacing them with new ones, although this doesn't, didn't always work out like they had planned. The Rise of the Civil Rights Movement the Brown versus Board of Education said that separate education facilities are inherently unequal and we must work to desegregate. However, this met with strong local opposition also known as massive resistance trying to stop integration. The Brown decision does not stop segregation, but rather starts a battle between the federal and state and local governments, as well as racial equality. In Little Rock, a school called Little Rock, the courts or ordered you get segregation, and a white mob tries to prevent this. So Eisenhower the president at the time sends troops to restore order and forces desegregation. Rosa Parks' refusal to give up her seat on a bus leads to the Montgomery boy bus boycott, which led to a desegregation of public transportation. Martin Luther King Jr. leads the civil rights movement with passive resistance, and Jackie Robinson is the first African American in Major League Baseball. Eisenhower integrates the armed forces and tries to desegregate the federal workforce. In 1957, we have a Civil Rights Act protecting black voters. So, why did the Civil Rights Movement happen in the 50s and 60s? There was broader education, a broader view of the world from World War II, and as well as education, and middle and blacks are now in the middle class with more education, so they recognize their obstacles and they know what they need to do to resist. However, with television, they are excluded from the white world. How, though with the news, they conveyed civil rights demonstrations to more people, which caused more people to say, "Hey, we need to uh, fight against this." Eisenhower Republicanism. So, his administration staff was mainly business leaders, so there was a new out outlook on the welfare state. We need to maintain the social order, increase pur purchasing power, and stabilize, stabilize labor relations. We need to limit the federal activities and encourage private enterprise. enterprise. Wage and right price controls were reduced and social service programs were met with opposition. The Federal Highway Act of 1956 builds 40,000 miles of interstate highways. Eisenhower wins a landslide victory in 1956. And there was opposition against anti-communism. McCarthy overreaches his bounds when his accusations attack the armed forces. So there are the Army Mar McCarthy hearings, which were televised. McCarthy's bullying accusations, evasion of the issues, made people see him as a villain. Eisenhower and the Cold War. The Soviet in the United States, Soviet Union and the United States were an edge away from direct confrontation. The U.S. Secretary of State and Foreign Policy, John Foster Dules, was anti-communist, and he said that containment is too passive, we need to do more. Instead of conventional forces in local conflicts like Korea, we need to use massive retaliation power, like nuclear weaponry. He utilized the possible the idea of brinkmanship, which means pushing Soviet Soviets to the brink of war to exact concessions. The economic benefits of this would be a reduction in American military spending. In Korea, we have a ceasefire, with with the 38th parallel being a boundary between North and South Korea. France tries to maintain control over their former colony Vietnam. However, this met with opposition with the communist Ho Chi Minh. 
The French collapsed in a siege because America didn't intervene. So this is the end of the French commitment and the expansion of American commitment in Vietnam. There's American loyalty to the new country of Israel, and they are also concerned about the friendliness of oil-rich countries in the area. Egypt trades with the Soviet Union. America does not help build, build the dam, so Egypt seizes the Suez Canal from the British. The British and French drive the Egyptians from the canal, and America helps Israel with a truce with Egypt. Fidel Castro takes power in Cuba, and America cut, cuts off relations, and the Cubans actually make an alliance with the Soviet Union. And because there's no agreement between NATO and the Soviet Union, the Soviets crushed the Hungarian Revolution. Eisenhower and the Soviet Khrushchev meet to make arrangements, but the Soviets shoot down American U-2 in American airspace, so their meetings are canceled. Eisenhower failed to eliminate U.S. and Soviet tensions, and he resisted military intervention. He is very different than his successors. So there's a growing desire for action and innovation. So next we will talk about civil rights, Vietnam, and liberalism.